I'm registered dietitian Abby Sharp, and on my new podcast, Bite Back with Abby Sharp, I'll be dismantling the multi billion dollar diet industry that keeps us in a cycle of self loathing and food fear. Join me every Tuesday for expert interviews, engaging conversations, and my signature science and sass to bust myths, correct misinformation, and help you break free from diet culture for good. Listen for free on the Seeker app or wherever you get your podcasts. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. 92 One City, Winnipeg's rock station. I remember that song. And the reason it sticks is because it was like an epic video. That was the Metallica Black album, which was a massive album for them. And right around that time, and it's funny the way music will remind you of something, but I must have been in grade 12 in that area, and I was babysitting for good friends of ours. It was the easiest babysitting gig of all time because they paid well, and all I'd have to do is go go over there before school, which was probably the the part of it that was the most difficult. So I had to get up early. Yeah, that is early. Because they were shift workers. But I'd go over there, sleep on the couch, and then the kids would get up on their own. I'd make toast and peanut butter, make sure they brush their teeth, (laughs) and shuttle them out the door to school, and that was it. And, sorry, Joe, I know you want to jump in here, but they had a satellite dish, one of those, and and that's the whole point of this story. These people had one of those giant satellite dishes, like, that took up half your backyard, but it meant you had, you know, ESPN, MTV and yeah. I loved MTV and I remember watching that video on MTV in their basement. I don't know why that the only though. drawback would have been if you had to shift from one satellite to another with one of those things the whole neighborhood would have heard the thing <laughs> shifting in the yard oh, yeah. and it could have taken up half half of that breakfast time because it would take its time. Oh look, you can and, and you could see the channel surfing over going Hey, it sets you up for parenting. Look at you. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I just want to point out, like, imagine having Phil as a babysitter, Joe. That'd be fun. I was good. I got to say I was good. Like, yeah. I was well, good peanut baby. butter toast. Like, you can't go wrong. Well, I had to make them breakfast. You know, like, that it's was part, part of that the was, gig. That was probably the, the, the most... Uh, the most work I had to do in the in, in the morning, right? Get them out the door, which is a lot of work. Toast, peanut butter, did you brush your teeth, and then get to school. That's awesome. So I could wow. get back to my TV programming. That's right. I want to watch the satellite. <laughs> but There was other channels on that satellite, I, too. I oh, was going to say, oh, I have a feeling that those played into the package. Those dishes, though, like at, there was a point where they were a huge deal. Like if you had someone in your neighborhood or a buddy with one of those dishes, it was a huge deal. Absolutely. Those are one of two things that were never moved out of the house after the sale. <laughs> that and the freezer. I literally <laughs> drove by my childhood home when I was back in Alberta this summer. Mm. And that thing is still oh, in yeah. the oh, yeah. yard. You don't move those? No, How you are can't. you moving? How are you moving? They're that? usually, like, the poles are usually embedded in concrete <laughs> in the backyard. Like and it. <laughs> now it's the world's biggest bird bath <laughs> on a slant. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Call the bone phone. 780 Bone. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. To the gentleman on Oak Point Highway at approximately 430, that does not know how to cross a median or drive. <laughs> um, it was uncalled for to go onto oncoming traffic and to also flip me off. And then when I point that out and ask you why you flipped me off to continue to try him off me, yeah, just learn to drive, kid. That's all. There's other people out there. And, uh, yeah, you clearly don't know how to drive. Be safe out there. Yeah, I mean, it happens to all of us. Where you're sure you did not do anything wrong in a particular situation, yet you still get anger from the other driver and you're like what <laughs> I'm, I'm almost blown away that he was able to ask yeah. the other driver <laughs> why that doesn't usually happen it might have just been one of those like the looks you know yes. like what the hell Hands do, in the air. you know like, yes. what? what i love it what i do but it's always the driver that's in the wrong that has to go out in a blaze of glory you mm. know it's like if <laughs> i'm gonna make sure that they know yeah if i get angry enough it can't be my fault yeah sir rodney good morning pjk sir rodney here i'm just driving to work right now and i'm just kind of thinking to myself doing 105 in the right lane on the perimeter highway people are flying by me 110 whatever they're doing i'm going to work if they're going to work and they're in that much of a hurry they must really love their jobs i am in no hurry to get to work 
I'm just taking my time, sipping my coffee, listening to the best radio station in Winnipeg, 92.1 City, with the best morning show, PJK. Hey. Slow down, guys. You're just going to work. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. I guess they're running late, so Rodney might be the point. I'm not sure. <laughs> they're gonna... Maybe they're going home. Yeah. Maybe the shift is over. That could be too. Anyway, yeah, I mean, we... we... They got to punch in. You got to uh, take it easy out there, as my grandpa would say. More calls, more reaction to the Amazon Jets game the other night. I mentioned I thought I had aliens coming through the stream about to take over because there was some... Uh, you know, weird talk. Uh, this stream got all funky for a few minutes on my broadcast. T. Kona can relate. Hey, good morning. It's T. Kona. Hey, Philly, you just played that audio of your TV getting all wonky uh, during the uh, Amazon broadcast. Yeah, I got the same thing, too. So I just, like, I ran into the room and grabbed my tinfoil hat. You know, I didn't know if the aliens were trying to communicate. So I thought maybe I could tune them in a little bit better with my tinfoil hat on but uh i think they what they were trying to say is like the leafs suck mm, they didn't suck that wow. night i'll tell you that do you remember uh when they had those uh cheater uh contraptions you could actually build one at home this was before like youtube was out there or <laughs> google yeah. and and you could just pirate tv channels oh, yeah. with this thing <laughs> and nobody would complain, like, because you'd be watching, like, uh, either dirty movies or movies, and there'd be, like, scrambled signals and yeah. sometimes sounds. Nobody complained. No. Right? Because it was absolutely for free. <laughs> but if you're paying for Amazon Prime, you don't need the glitches, okay? Oh, man, wow. Was, what it, a time. It, it, was, it was crazy how many people were complaining about yeah. the, that lengthy... Yes. <laughs> it legit sounded like, some, like my TV was possessed. It was scaring yes. me. Uh, okay, Bob Bird. We heard from... From the mafia, Dougie Muscles the other day, and now Bob Bird. Yo, Bob Bird here. I don't know if this is uh, too late or not, but uh, you know, like if Amazon Prime was trying to get the look of Blades of Steel 1994 on the old Nintendo, <laughs> they nailed it because those graphics were freaking awful through my <laughs> end out in the country. Oh, awful. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good to have you back, Bob. Although I didn't mind the actual, like, other than that uh, s- uh, supposed alien takeover for like three minutes, I didn't mind the broadcast at all. Yeah, I, that, I, th- I think it was about a sixty forty positive from uh, what what I saw or heard from uh, from my group of friends. Mm-hmm. And what's a uh, conversation about Amazon Prime without Doctor Hockey? Yeah, what's going on? Anyways, no, uh, Philly was saying. I- I got all the Jets here. Went to a buddy's place. Oh. No, I watched it on YouTube. Well, not they didn't, they don't play while the game is on. They wait till it's finished. Mm. Then I watch uh, highlights. About twelve minutes long. They just show the best plays, the scores. You know, like, sort of like the highlights, but they they sort do of. show a little bit. Yeah, I'm not paying for that prime stuff. That is a major rip off. What kind of crap is that? Yeah, I'm gonna pay for hockey. Uh, they should be paying me to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're trying to make money? No one's going to pay for that. I can't see it. No one. <laughs> so I'll just watch it on YouTube. No big deal. Yeah, so they're going to start doing the prime stuff. I hope they don't do it for the playoffs. Then I may be done with hockey. Well, I'm not paying no money for that prime station. Uh, that's just not going to happen with Vinny. <laughs> Okay, well, Prime, take note. Wow. I have to ask a few quick questions if I could. <laughs> Please do. So <laughs> if you have cable and you're watching hockey, you're paying for mm-hmm. it. If you have Amazon and you're watching hockey, you pay for it. You go live to a game, you're paying for it. So this is an incredible <laughs> an incredible journey. <laughs> that uh, Mr. Hey, but I will say this about Mr. Hockey. Uh, like every other great uh, analyst, they get paid to watch hockey. Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't Mr. Hockey? He might be onto something. Right? I, I, Dr. Hockey. Or Dr. Uh, Hockey, come, sorry. Joe. He's Joe. got the, yes, he's got the doctorate. Don't I forgot. Infer- there, there's probably, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> he's got the degree, baby. I, I, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that he doesn't, like, he, he truly does not watch the entire game. No, he, he yeah. doesn't watch it live. Which makes a lot of yeah. sense. He just gets the highlights. Mm-hmm. He's not getting paid to watch the whole game is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might watch it if it's on, like, Hockey Night in Canada, yeah. probably. Yeah. Right. You know, like on, his cable, yeah. on his cable package <laughs> that maybe somebody else is paying for. I don't know. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. 
I know a lot of people this time of year start uh, looking ahead at booking maybe a winter vacation uh, of sorts. But uh, Kirby, you might have seen this in action already because you just came back from two different trips. But I was just reading. Joe knows I wouldn't have seen this in action because I don't fly to Fargo for these hockey trips or Grand Forks or even Minneapolis. You know, it's funny. (laughs) I just read a story. I think it was Mike McIntyre in the Winnipeg Free Press was talking about the new attitude of the Winnipeg Jets and how a close-knit group they are that in the locker room they have a map set up of North America because of all the stops they have to make during the season. And there's a big Jets logo. Mm. Okay, so, you know, you put a pin in the spots for every game, right? They had a bit of a chip on their shoulder because the story is broken and Coach Scott or Neil and that have been talking about the fact that, hey, it's tough to get players to come here and, you know, we're the little engine that could kind of philosophy and everything. Phil Aubrey does not have a map of (laughs) pins of where he's been. It's a very, Uh. it's... Manitoba, Edmonton. Yeah. Regina. Grand For- oh, Regina. Yeah. Going west. Don't forget Regina. Uh, sorry. Regina was a big event. Uh, Grand Forks, <laughs> Fargo, Minnesota. Boom. Boom. Mooseman. We went to Mooseman. We together. went to Mooseman. Right, That's right. okay. In Saskatchewan, there's an extra pin. Portage La Prairie for a third Portage La Prairie. When it comes to ground travel, this guy's got it covered. And we went to head office, <laughs> Toronto, to do one. some commercials. Oh, that was a big Bagel deal. Bagel Gate. Yeah. That I don't know if we're ever going to be invited back. But anyway, that's uh, that's on the Air Miles program for uh, Phil. But the thing is, American Airlines has come up with this story, and I'm sure WestJet, Air Canada have all looked into this if they don't already have it in play. But they have a term, I guess, for people that like to, you know, crawl in before their turn uh, to get on the plane. It's called gate lice. Apparently, that's what the term lice. is. They gate get the lice, lice name. <laughs> so oh, it's wow. terrible. But what happens is people notice. You can always kind of tell when you're in line getting on your flight that somebody's trying to. So this is up. when they go, uh, would uh, sections A, B, and C line up now? Yeah. And then someone who's not in those sections lines up. That's, right. you, that, that's gate lice? Right, when you're trying to go in out of order. Okay. Right? So, oh, hey, man. we're calling uh, phase one or, you know, whatever it is, and, yeah. and you're supposed to be phase three, and you're going, why wouldn't I want to sit in a more uncomfortable seat <laughs> and get my bag in there before? And the reason is so many people are, are now bringing on carry-on. Right. There's limited space. So you want to get on early to get that space over your row. Because sometimes, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, that's, sorry, Joe, and that's pretty much why I think a lot of these airlines have implemented these rules. I love. Well, plus, there's too many confrontations with staff. And there's already yeah. enough pressure when they're the people that have to, sure, your flight's <laughs> been delayed for another hour, right? So yeah. what happens is apparently American Airlines, now if you go out of order and you line up to show your boarding pass, this loud alert goes <laughs> off so you look like a complete douche <laughs> to the rest of the people in line. Mm. So apparently this should stop. Uh, that from so happening. it wasn't bad enough to <laughs> to call them gate lice. Now they're gonna shame them even wow. more with the buzzer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incorrectly lined. The up. next thing science is working on is to uh, take care of uh, that spot in the pool where somebody pees because they've been sitting there all day, where it turns a different color. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I've seen it. Like, well, when I was in Nashville, like we flew. Uh, I think we paid for, like, now WestJet, there's so many tiers of different, you know, yes. seats or whatever. Anyways, I don't, we were, like, on the low end because we just wanted a cheap ticket to to Nashville from Winnipeg. And uh, basically, Economy. We the, yeah, we were, like, the last to board. And it, honestly, it was it was easy. It was perfect. Mm. It was nice, you know. Was the overhead all jammed up, man? I I've seen some. Yes, well, I've we seen weren't some allowed to bring carry ons. Oh, you weren't because wow. we were a part of the tier where you cannot bring a carry on. Like yeah, they changed that, yeah. right? Mm. So you so, have to check a but bag. But it is chaos nowadays. Like <laughs> they've got like people at the gate, literally uh, shoving their carry on bag into the thing that lets you know if it's too too oh, yeah. big or whatever, telling themselves that it's gonna fit. And it's so funny watching these people. I'm like, no, the Wheel is not going to move on that suitcase, sir. Like you're not going to get it in there. <laughs> Got to bring but, a tool uh... <laughs> kit. Start unraveling the wheels. <laughs> this yes. is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. I'm registered dietitian Abby Sharp, and on my new podcast, Bite Back with Abby Sharp, I'll be dismantling the multi-billion-dollar diet industry that keeps us in a cycle of self-loathing and food fear. 
Join me every Tuesday for expert interviews, engaging conversations, and my signature science and sass to bust myths, correct misinformation, and help you break free from diet culture for good. Listen for free on the Seeker app or wherever you get your podcasts. Would you rather go on a date with someone who burps loudly or who picks their nose? Keep in mind, I want to throw a little caveat in here. You like this person. So this is a multiple date but yet you're, so you're kind of... So they check every other box except for they do this. Like, I'm really into this person, but they either burp loudly or they pick their nose. It's like a dilemma. That is quite the dilemma, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoveling at the table mm. in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are they eating it as well? Because that's like... Not eating it. They're not in grade three. Okay. So they're just... It's well, just that they shovel Aaron a little bit. Aaron Rodgers recently did the did the picking of the nose on the sidelines, and they caught video of him eating it, so... Well, eating it? Really? I yes. didn't see that. That was the French coach once at a World Cup or Euro, I remember seeing. Sh- yeah. That? Aaron Rodgers? Hey, come yes, on. Yes. I promise you, literally... I'll Google the Google Aaron Rodgers less. picking his nose. Eating boogers. He's got um, a lot of problems these days, Rogers. Getting old, though. We're getting older. He's stressful, okay? Uh, I don't know. Burping is probably less jarring because mm-hmm. it's a... Sometimes you can't help it. Yeah. Sometimes if I drink pop too fast, it happens. And I'm sure. like, oh my gosh, excuse me. It's a natural bodily function. Yeah, I think it depends on uh, level. Like, are we talking like level five burp or a level one? Like, this is a big hurricane coming in. Like, you know, like right? if it's just a little... Uh, from Revenge of the Nerds, that, that kind of burp? Yeah. No. Speaking, uh, yeah. But the other type of booger you were asking here, I don't want to see somebody picking their nose the whole time because <laughs> that could be a lengthy battle that uh, you're witnessing. I think I got to go with the burp. deep in their nose. Yeah, I got to so, go with burp. Both you guys are going with the burps. All right. Yeah. Would you rather, during a zombie invasion, Kirby, would you rather be the leader of a posse or just a member of a posse? So, you know, if you think of The Walking Dead and they get these, there's these groups a- a- after an apocalypse. Mm. So you're either in a group or you're leading the group. They're looking to you for decisions, like where are we going? As much as I like to lead, not in this case. I don't want to be in charge of a life or death situation. People are not going to trust in me, okay? <laughs> We're going north. We're going to follow Kirby. <laughs> I honestly don't even know where North is, but we're going North. Like it would, I'm sure people would start to turn against me, and there would be like an overthrow a rebellion. Yeah, I gotta get rid of this leader. She sucks. I'll tell you, it's a little dramatic. I think would be the case. Really. So I'm just gonna be a member. Just I'll I'll follow whoever. Yeah. No, I think at this point in my life, I'd like to be in control. Okay. I'd like to be a leader. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're not dealing with the sharpest knives in the drawer either if this is a zombie apocalypse like most of us are brain dead already, right? No, no, you're not zombies. Oh, you're not you're, zombies. You're, you're s- ag- like you're oh, against yeah. the zombies. You're no, no. against the zombies. No, I'd rather still be in control. At least okay. you might have a shot at your own destiny here if you're following somebody else. Do you want Kirby? A little extra question. Do no, you want Kirby in no. your group? Kirby loves to lead, but I'm still trying to figure out in, in what. <laughs> what are you going to lead? In two steps. In two steps. Uh, You're going to teach me how to two step. <laughs> that'll that'll it, stop the zombie. It will. Apocalypse. <laughs> stop them in their tracks. Look at this idiot. He's trying to two step with the leader of the pack. She looks like the leader. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather, we'll wrap up with this one. Would you rather, Kirby, be hired as a real estate agent in Haddonfield, Illinois? So that's where Michael Myers from okay. Halloween. So you're trying to sell property in Haddonfield <laughs> or or be a conservation officer at Camp Crystal Lake. That, of course, is where Jason roamed the woods and killed campers and all of that stuff in Friday right. the 13th. So your conservation a Halloween question, conservation officer at Camp Crystal Lake or a real estate agent in Haddonfield, Illinois. That's a great question. I'm going to go with the conservation officer because can you imagine trying to sell houses in in oh, that place like a lot of people aren't relocating no. to that place like oh i heard such great things about this town the economy is <laughs> there's, booming there's this masked murderer <laughs> on the loose that's coming back constantly to you know off people so i would i would go with the conservation plus i love the wildlife mm-hmm. yeah we just yeah. got to avoid jason just gotta avoid jason. amazing to me how much time you spend out there in the wild <laughs> in a year for, for a place you love so much um i'm gonna I said I like the she wildlife. loves, no, no. Wildlife. Yeah, she the loves it yeah, going Not to the, the bar in the wild going to the bar that's the wildlife <laughs> oh, um my God. i'm gonna say this that to me is probably the scarier of the two options because out in the wild and the wilderness i don't know what i'm facing never mind <laughs> already right. this this terrible being 
at least I got a shot at making a living trying to sell real estate. I'm living in the city. <laughs> Why do you gotta be so logical? That's my environment, right? So you put a sign up, right? <laughs> You're only showing houses by day. I mean, once it gets dark, you stay home. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. I have a question for you guys. Are you this person? I'll play. It's a snippet of someone we know well on the bone phone, the hooligan. And I meant to play it in, at 620 bone phone. And then I know we've got the bone phone coming up in 10 minutes. But it's a, it's a conversation I want to have. So, uh, and I want to like, like separate from the bone phone. So let me just play this and see if you know somebody like this or maybe you're like this. I'd like to know if any of you have a friend like this. So one of my friends, he'll phone me. I don't want to answer. He calls, no exaggeration, three, four times after each call. Like, obviously, if I didn't answer the phone, I'm busy. Like, he'll phone me when he's eating supper, and he's like, mm, mm. I'm not exaggerating, mm. Or he, he's always doing something when he calls, rattling, recycling, dumping garb, whatever it is. It's, like, so annoying. They, he texts 911, answer right away. And I text, I said, look. I told you I worked overtime. I'm not talking to until after I shower, <laughs> I eat, get my lunch ready for the next day, and a little bit of house cleaning and laundry, etc. When I'm sitting down doing nothing, then I will call you. He gets, he gets so irate and he'll call, and like it's so bloody annoying. So I guess two parts to that: <laughs> Are you or do you know someone who they'll call you once you don't answer because it's not a good time to talk? So they'll just keep calling you until you answer, and then you assume it's an emergency, but it's not. Or on the other hand of it, are you that person that won't take a call at certain times of day because, quote, it's not a good time to talk? I'll call you back later when yeah. I'm when I have when it's a better time for me to talk. Well, this is why the the text before you call me, I I like I'm a big fan of it because then you can line up a time. That works best for both of you. Line up a time like it's an appointment with a doctor. (laughs) Yeah, here we go. Miss Busy. Super busy. Okay, Uh, listen. Super busy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So much going on. Well, if you want to talk to me on the phone, it's a good, if you you literally want to chat with me, everybody in my life knows you got to text first. Mm. It's just a, it's just a thing with me. What about, oh, this is good. Before I know, and I know Joe's answer. We'll get to that in a second, but this, what about the people that call you after you've texted them? So you text them, hey, bro, what do you think of this? And they, they boom, call. your phone rings. Oh, yeah. See, that's different. Joe, you're a little bit like that. If you're, if, 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 if I'm in my car, yeah, I'll call you back if you're trying to text me. Right. Whether you answer or not, that's up to you. But um, you will always answer your phone. More, yes. more times than not. Yeah. Yeah, I will. But hooligan, it is a two parter. First of all, <laughs> Why is the guy just continuing calling if he's not answering the phone? But you can tell Hooligan's not a multitasker. He wants to get his stuff done, and then when he's got the free time, he's got time to talk. There's nothing wrong with that mm-hmm. if that's where you are. His buddy is the multitasker. That's the problem here. Yeah, He's right. taking out stuff, doing stuff. I don't know about eating. It's like Vinny. Vinny calls once in a while while he's eating. Sometimes he has a thought, and, stuff. and he needs to get it out just that But moment. I'll tell you right now, there's no way ever. I'm going to text Kirby before I call her. I'll call Kirby. <laughs> he doesn't listen to my rules, no. and I still answer his damn calls. I don't no, know. Not like, always, like... and, but but I'm not calling back. I'll wait for her to get a hold of me. That's, yeah. that's a pretty simple... Uh, uh, and he always says, sorry, I know, I didn't text. Yeah, because I usually make my phone calls while I'm driving. That's mm-hmm. me multitasking because then right. I get that done going. And yeah. if somebody can't answer, they can't answer. I just find it funny just because of the way the hooligan... Tells well, a story. J Dog like says that. on the text line, I keep calling till they pick up. L M A O. Yeah. So he's one of those guys. <laughs> I'm definitely like that with my brother though. Like if I can't get a hold of my brother, I'll call his fiance right away. Like mm-hmm. right after. Like if he doesn't answer his phone, I'm like, Well, she's probably nearby. My call dad her. does that. My dad if I don't answer, calls my wife. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Your dad, I understand. That's like I would expect my dad to do the same because in the moment they don't want to forget why they're calling anyway, because they're that age. But you just said we have to text you yeah, because of your busy schedule and we'll pick a time to talk, but yet <laughs> you're the same person who's going to do what happens to the hooligan. You're going to, oh, can't get hold of my brother. I'll call my sister-in-law. Someone's going to answer because i got to talk to them right now. Well, yeah. You can't be both. 
I also give him a hard time because I'm like, this is why you're not my emergency contact because you're mm. unreliable. Uh, like, you can't, that's like, fair. you know, like, mm-hmm. the guy never that's gets, fair. you got to track him down. Like, but who's emergency things. contact are you? In an emergency, Kirby, you don't have time to text someone and <laughs> say, is this a good time to talk? <laughs> I've got an emergency. Don't an emergency never. Oh, yeah, thanks for clarifying that for us. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't obvious. <laughs> The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Got a rummage, rummage through. That's probably not the right use of the word rummage. Rummage through some text messages here. Uh, we got a bunch of text messages on the Boston Pizza text line about the whole do you take phone calls? Do you have somebody in your life who will call you? You don't answer. So they just, they'll just call you like two or three more times, like back to back to back until you answer as if to indicate that, no, I need to talk to you right now. And then you answer, and it's really not an emergency. They just figured you should answer your phone. I could see parents doing that, especially elderly parents, mm. because that's in the moment for them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Which is not at all shocking for no. any of us that, no. you know, look at our phone and, you know, see there's four missed calls from your elderly parent, and you're like, oh, my God, who died? Just, yeah, and then it's nothing. Like, it's like, really? Oh, I was just going to ask I you just made you something. the flyers. You should come and pick it up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Dad. Uh, oh, I made some tort. We made our tortier. You know how we do it every Christmas? Yeah, you got to come and get a few. Come and pick some up. I had to talk to you this afternoon. It was an emergency. Uh, we got a few. We got a bunch of text messages about it, though. I never answer phone calls. I'd rather text. My brother hates it. That comes from Sarah. That comes from Sarah. Got a few of those. I never answer the phone. Just text me, bud. This one uh, one lady texted in saying, my husband has three friends who will call three times in a half hour. So if all three of them are calling in the same half hour, that's 21 calls. <laughs> That's that a busy so group. That's a like that guy is busy. <laughs> I mean, it's gotten even to the point where I noticed on like dating apps that like they will like y- allow you to now like specify what type of texter you are or if you like phone calls. Like it's gone to that point. Like that's reasonable. Like are you a mm. texter or are you a phone call kind of person? Yeah. Because you know, that could be a, a thing in the relationship. Talking on the phone with a possible new partner used to be a huge deal. Yes. You had the first time, first couple times you talk, you knew. Correct me if I'm wrong here, you guys. You knew there was a spark there if you could talk on the phone for two hours until her dad usually like, Get off, who are you talking to? Get off the phone. It's time for this. Yes. And it was like that two hours felt like two minutes. And you you yeah. kind of knew, oh, wow. I just... think I would need both. If I was in the dating world now and had that option. You would select both of those? Well, I think I so. Think you could just get to choose one. but Well, okay, either way. <laughs> then I just won't use that app, I guess. Um, all I'm saying is if you're texting with somebody, that's to a certain level. But I still think I need to hear their voice mm-hmm. and talk to them for a little bit more of an intimate conversation than I would just sexting or texting. Sexting. Wow, how quick is this? Things are moving fast. (laughs) I'm older. I only have so much time left. For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 921 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.